Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm Professor John R. and I'm your instructor. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a wax thickness gauge. Now, what's that? Well, it's a tool I use to help me determine the thickness of wax models for lost wax casting. This is a visual guide that's going to help you to determine the thickness of your wax carvings that are made from similar wax. Now this is a blue piece of blue phyla wax and as you can see it's got a nice angle to it. It sort of has the same profile as like a wooden shim or a doorstop. It's smooth and finished on the back side just like a finished piece of wax jewelry would be. And it's got the same sort of smooth, even finish on the front side. Now, what this does is it eliminates the need for you to use a tool like this one. Now, this is a gauge that's regularly used to determine the thickness of materials, but it's got a spring in it, so it's aggressive. It's going to close really hard on your wax surfaces. And these jaws are a little bit sharp and they might mar or ruin the finish that you've recreated on your wax model. And remember, your wax models need to be perfect if they're going to go to the caster. Now, let me show you how it works. To do that, what I need to do is I'm going to bring out a little fluorescent light. Now, if I put the wax thickness wet guide in front of the light, you can see as the wax gets thicker, you see a darker and darker shade of blue. And if you use this with a pair of calipers, you'll know exactly how thick the wax is. Let me show you an example. Now, what I have over here is a finished, polished piece of wax that I've carved. And if I put it against the light, you can see that this piece of wax is carved to a pretty consistent thickness and it's almost as thick as the end of the wax gauge. So I could measure the end of this piece to determine how thick the piece is before I send it to the casters. Ideally, you don't want to go thinner than, say, maybe a 22 gauge thickness. Now, what's the point of all of this? Well, the purpose for it is to be able to determine if you're sending a model to the caster that is of the correct thickness and that you have a uniform thickness. Now, like I said, you don't want to send something that's thinner than, say, a 22 gauge thickness because it may not cast out correctly. If a model has thick and thin spots, the molten metal may not be able to fill the thinner spots and then you'd have a void in your, your finished piece and you don't want that. So, let me show you how to make one. The first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to cut a piece of sheet wax that is the type of wax that you're going to be using. So I'm using a blue file of wax and I'm going to use a regular wax file. So if I sit at the bench, what I want to do is I want to work primarily on one corner of the piece. So I'm just going to start to file that corner. and what I want to do is I want to file towards my towards the back end, which is the closest towards me, and I want to leave a margin of maybe 8 to 10 millimeters that will serve as a handle or a base that I can basically hold on to and not worry about. Now remember, you're going to finish this piece to match the finish that you apply to your pieces of jewelry. Okay, so I've started the angle pretty well here. And I could move to any type of file. I could move to a larger metal file and continue to make that angle. But eventually what you want to do is you want to sand the piece because you do want to put a finish that's like your finished models. So if I hold that angle and just start to sand, I'll be able to get a completely uniform surface onto my tool. Now you want to use a surface that's perfectly flat and in this case I have a piece of acrylic sheet. This or a piece of glass would be ideal but glass you might push too hard and break so the acrylic is good. So once you get that angle on the piece the exact way that you want it you would then finish this piece using something like a wax cleaner in combination with a nylon piece of hosiery. The hosiery is a bit abrasive and the cleaning solution 
somewhat melts the surface in order to clean it and shine it. And that way you'll end up with something that will work perfectly. I hope you like this tip. There are plenty more like it on OnlineJewelryAcademy.com. Don't forget, we regularly post interesting and fun things to Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you'd like to support the production of future videos like this one, you can do so through a contribution on Patreon.com. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to like the video. Thanks for watching.